And that is uh, why we have such a difficult time understanding the role of luck or randomness in our processes. Now, if I tell you the future has skill and luck, there's not a person in the room that doesn't get that, right? You all understand that and understand it's different in different realms. But there's a very interesting process. As something actually occurs, there's a very interesting process that goes on in our minds. That is, your brain will create very rapidly and very effortlessly a story to explain what just happened. And then you will take that story and you will, by the way, often makes you look good. And then you will take that story and then you'll file it in your own mind. And once you've done that, two things happened. The first is called hindsight bias, which is you start to believe that you knew what was going to happen with a greater probability than you actually did. And second is a concept called creeping determinism, which is you start to believe that what happened was the only thing that could have happened. You dismiss all those other things that you thought were possible because now you have the facts. Now, what is going on? So you say, why, why am I showing this weird image? Well, there's this absolutely fascinating strand of research done primarily by this guy here named uh, Michael Gazanica, who's a neuroscientist, on split brain patients. Now, these are people, these are patients who have debilitating epilepsy, and it's so bad, their seizures are so bad, that they go to the last, last treatment possible, which is severing the corpus callosum the bundle of nerves between the two hemispheres. By the way, it turns out it's actually a very successful surgery. Most people really does help them out a great deal. But it sets up this absolutely fascinating experimental condition where researchers now can feed information into one part of the brain, left right hemisphere, where there's no language, for instance, and then ask what's happening in your left, through your left hemisphere. So it turns out in this analysis, they found that there's part of your left brain called the interpreter. And all the interpreter does all day is take input, information, effects that it sees, and creates causes or stories or narratives to explain. Now, when we look at the split brain patients, we can see you can feed something into the right hemisphere, and the left hemisphere has no idea what's going on. It will effortlessly create a gibberish story to explain what's going on. Now, here's the key. The interpreter, obviously, was something that was evolutionarily very useful. However, it doesn't know anything about luck. It's all about causality. It knows nothing about luck. So as a consequence, many of these stories that we create end up being completely bogus. Now, there's a really interesting book by John Gottschall called The Storytelling Animal and Our Love of Stories. And let me just read this to you in its entirety. And the last sentence is the key one. The storytelling mind is allergic to uncertainty, randomness, and coincidence. It is addicted to meaning. If the storytelling mind cannot find meaningful patterns in the world, it will impose them. In short, the storytelling mind is a factory that churns out true stories when it can, but will manufacture lies when it can't. Now, if you read the research on split brain patients, you'll see it's almost humorous how the, the interpreter is going. But the point of emphasis is that the interpreter is going in all of our brains all the time. We're just not aware of it. The vast majority of the time, it's, it is linking cause and effect correctly, right? Throw the window at the, the rock at the window, it smashes, cause and effect. But in, in instances where cause and effect is not so clear, it's making up stories to explain the world around us. And this can be very, very problematic. So let me finish. You say, whoa, where does this actually apply in the real world? There's this really interesting literature on what makes for great companies, good to great, in search of excellence, built to last. You've seen, you've seen all these books. Now, the question you might want to ask is, of the companies mentioned in those books, how many are there by dint of luck, and how many are there because they're truly skillful? It's exactly what, kind of what Barry was talking about. Let, let, me, let me have my pantheon of money managers. How many are there because they're truly skillful, and how many are there just by dint of luck? Well, there really had been no quantitative way to, to analyze this or, or answer this question, but there was research done the last year or two by a, uh, Michael Rayner and Mumtaz Ahmed where they said, we're going to look, I will go into this, spare you all the details, but they said, we're going to look at corporate performance from 1960 through 2010. And what they do is they basically create a model, it's a transition matrix, and they, they understand the empirical parameters, and then they simulate the world lots of times. So in other words, you understand what is considered common cause variation, so basically randomness, and what is special cause variation, basically skill. So you can now separate skill and noise. So with this template, they applied it to the 19 most popular books of this genre. There were 699 specific companies mentioned in these books. And it turns out when they applied their lens, only 12% of the companies mentioned could be confidently coded as skillful. 
88% were there by dint of luck. Now, if that doesn't strike you as remarkable, imagine saying, I'm going to sell millions of copies of books telling you to emulate